The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. How many know that these, this is the remaining days of the fifth month of what we call the heaps? So the Lord is blessing his people. How many would say with the uplifted hand, Pastor, I've seen the blessing of the Lord in, in amazing ways. Who could say that the past four and a half months that you've seen an acceleration in that? And that other people are asking you what is going on. Who's had somebody ask you what's happening? Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Okay. As you know, we've taught you every time before we receive the offering to not just throw something in the bucket, but to mix your faith with the Word of God. And I want us to go, I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation today, just for fun, to Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says here, so I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father, I say perfect Father. Now, the moment you mention father to some people, the connotations of a father is bad because they didn't have a good father. But I want you to know that he is a good, good, good father. The perfect father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. And then he says, I pray, which I encourage you to take this prayer and pray it over yourself as much as you can. There are many other prayers that you can pray. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3. He said, and I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory. And we we'll say unlimited. unlimited. How many know that God is not short on supply? <laughs> the unlimited riches of his glory and favor Glory and favor. Do you realize that the very presence of God that you feel and that the favor of God will take you further than anything that man can derive or man deems to be wealth and this will give me, you know, that's why I said what I said. I mean, I was armed with the anointing and vision and I believed that God would give me the favor according to his word. That's why I didn't need any money to propose. Plus, I wanted to see if she was going to join me in faith. Or if she had said, no, I can't get married to you because you have nothing. I have, a guitar, I, have a, I have a guitar and a suitcase. She had the car. And I was checking to see what she would say. So it was actually a test. And even my father-in-law said to me, you have nothing. He said, go out and make a success of your life and then come back and get my daughter. I said, absolutely not. I said, she will start with me on the ground floor now because if I leave here without her, I'll never come back. And then, of course, what's he going to do? He can't do, he can't do anything because I already won the heart of his precious daughter. Amen. And there comes a time when the young lady has to leave. And the Bible even says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And I was going to cleave. <laughs> and no one was going to stop the cleaving. <laughs> Jesus. 
I was going to leave and cleave. And we left, and it's 40 years now, October. We've been leaving and cleaving ever since. And can you say amen? Why is everybody just looking at me? So everybody say unlimited riches of his glory and favor. He says until supernatural strength floods your innermost being. You know, somebody said, well, I haven't had that happen. Then you need to pray this till supernatural strength floods your being. Because without supernatural strength, you will not make it in the days to come. You're not going to make it. This past week, Thursday night, we had a pastor here. Pastor Moses Cow. he's a guest of Dr. Morocco who preached Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He's from Vietnam. And the Lord has spoken to me to sow a seed into his ministry. He has a Vietnamese church here in Tampa. He's only been here a month. And so I didn't really know him. I just knew that he was associated with Dr. Morocco and King's Cathedral. And so I said, please bring him upstairs. I want to meet him. But the Lord already said to sow, you know, $5,000 to his ministry. And the testimony of this man is remarkable. You're actually going to hear it next week at the camp meeting. And I'm actually going to have him come speak at the stand. But it, it actually just blew my mind. And I understood what he was saying. Because I know how the Holy Spirit wants to help his people, God's people. But God's people don't want help or they don't think there is help available. They, they know what the Bible says, but they think, no, you know, I've got to do something. No, you have to believe the word and then God comes into play. So I asked for them to bring him up after the service. And of course, so he, uh, he was, he, uh, you know, he received the invitation and they brought him up. He thought he was coming to say goodbye to Dr. Morocco, but the Lord said to him, no, you're going to meet the man of God. Now, he is from Vietnam. He has a very funny, he has a sense of humor like me, which is very rare for Asian. Was a, you know, when I preached, when I preached in Tokyo, Japan, we had 2,000 people there and my interpreter and I was cracking jokes and nobody was la- laughing. Or if they did laugh, they laughed like a pause. So I knew they weren't laughing at what I said and I turned to my interpreter and said, you're not interpreting what I'm saying. He said, no, because I can't find the words in Japanese to say what you said. There is nothing of the equivalent. So I just looked at them and said, laugh, it's American joke. So then I realized that I had to change the way I communicated because some things don't translate into the language. And so the the conversion of this man is remarkable, which you'll hear next week. And then he told me the story. Well, when he told me, I began to weep in my office because the same fire that came in my room just over a year ago in March came right in the room. He felt it, I felt it. And I knew what he was saying was the truth. Because it says here, until his supernatural strength floods your innermost being, which many people, even in the ministry, have never experienced that. They know it up here. They know all the theory about everything. They can articulate. They can preach. But they have no experience of the reality of the power of God. And that's why we tell all of you, you have to have an encounter with God. That's why this fire conference is so important. Somebody said, but I already know all the scripture and I know what you're going to preach on. Yeah, but you haven't got it yet. So you've got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. And even some that have got it yet, you let it died down, and now instead of you burning brightly, you've got like some embers. The fire of God is not going to kill you. It'll purify you. It'll never kill you. Never, we've never had anybody die from the fire of God. Never. He had a radical conversion, just like the Apostle Paul, which you'll get to hear about. And then he began to smuggle Bibles into China and all the different countries around Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. 
And there's a penalty in China, one Bible, three years in prison. And he said, so pastor, I got arrested, I was thrown in prison, you know, and they tortured me. He said, except when they tortured me, I never felt a thing. He said, they hung me upside down, they poured water on me, they electrocuted me, and when they electrocuted me, when the shock went through me, I felt the power of God, and he said, I started to laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> and he said, they kept checking the equipment because they couldn't understand why is he laughing, and they turned up everything, and they kept shocking him, and the more they shocked him, he said, the more I felt the power of God, and I laughed, and I laughed. And I laughed. So he said, then they tested it on themselves <laughs> and they nearly killed themselves because the voltage was so high. They tried everything and he just laughed. So they came at night to his cell, like early as the morning, and they brought, the guy brings this AK-47 and he kneels down and he says, man of God, I give you my gun. He, he broke his weapon and gave him, uh, in a prison cell, you hand your weapon to your prisoner and gave his life to Jesus. And he said, look, I don't want your gun, but give me the stock. Because he said, Lord, if you give me a piece of wood, I'm going to make an instrument that I'm going to worship you with. And he actually built a ukulele, which he didn't even know what he's building, and he plays it in worship. So it's crazy. It's a crazy story from the AK-47 stock. So anyway, he said, look, I finally did get arrested. It was bad because if it's three years for one Bible, he said, I had three truckloads. <laughs> <laughs> three trucks of Bibles. So they would have to put him away for thousands of years. So they just decided that they're gonna, they're gonna, he's going to get the death penalty. But he was in prison and whatever. And so... They come to him at three in the morning. They take him out, five people, the captain and four of his uh, henchmen. They were not wearing uh, name, number, whatever, because in Chinese culture, if the person you kill sees who kills them and knows their name, they can come back and kill you in the afterlife. You know, it's a whole big thing, mist, like a whole big mist, you know, uh, superstition. So he says, they blindfold me, so I'm standing there now blindfolded, they're gonna execute me, they're gonna kill me at 3.30 in the morning so nobody can see me, so I'm standing there and I'm blindfolded. And they said, okay, take it off, take off his blindfold, his hand come from behind his back's back and he's standing there and they said, any last wish? Now he has a sense of humor, so the guy got a cigarette, wants to give me a cigarette. He said, what, you don't have a cigar? <laughs> you know? And so he's standing there and he said, they said, you must have a last wish. Switch it off. That's my wish. <laughs> he said, you must have a last wish. He said, yes, I have a wish that you will come to know Jesus like I have come to know Jesus. That when I, I'm going to die now and I'm going home, but that one day you're going to come and be in heaven with me. And he said, the power of God hit him. The power of God hit him. Supernatural strength flooded his innermost being. And he began to speak in other tongues. And he said, as I spoke in other tongues, I looked at the first man, I called his name, his wife's name, and his children's name. He starts shaking with his gun because now the guy knows who he is. <laughs> he said, I looked at the second guy, I called his name, his family, he's shaking. I went down all four and was shaking under the power of God. And then the captain took out his weapon, stuck it by his head and said, I'm going to end this right now. I'm tired of this rubbish. And he said, another name came out. And the four that were shaking said, that's your father. That's your father. He said, yes, and your father's in intensive care right now. And he's dying of a disease. And the guy said, well, my father live if I let you go. 
He said, yes, and he will give his life to Jesus and come to know him as Lord and Savior. So the guy said, okay, I'm going to say this to you. I want you to run and move quickly. Otherwise, I'll change my mind. And what he told me next, people watching, you might not believe it. You might think I'm making this up. But X-Men have no, there's nothing to compare. How many know that Elijah outran a chariot of horses 20 miles to Jezreel? Okay. And when he told this to me, I just began to weep because this, as he told me, the same fire that came in my room, I felt it. He felt it in my office, 11.30 at night. He felt it. I felt it. And I knew that what he was telling me was the truth. He said, Pastor, I sprinted and I ran as fast as I could do. And I was praying in other tongues. He said, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. And I went to sleep and I dreamed I was running. He said, I ran over mountains. I ran across rivers on the top of the water. I ran. I ran the whole night in my sleep. When I woke up, I found myself at a train station in Guangzhou, 600 miles away. And I told him, I said, when I got arrested, I had a total peace. I was trying to buy the handcuffs. When they put me in the prison, I went to sleep. Listen, let me tell you, you think this stuff is not real. And you think this is just available for people that are captured in China or whatever. This is available for the American church. You can either live according to somebody that has no understanding of the power of the Holy Spirit or you can come and you can receive the fire and you can receive the anointing and that's what this next week is going to be it's going to be eight days of fire that God's going to sustain you that if you get yourself into a problem the Holy Spirit will flood you and God will bring you through the other side he said I wake up on a bench in the train station with a whole family around me, and I'm just still speaking tongues. I can't speak in Mandarin because he speaks Mandarin. He said, I can't speak in Mandarin. I'm speaking tongues. They're all crying. They buy me a ticket to Hong Kong. And he said, I went to Hong Kong. And he said, the rest is history. Everything that he does, there's a major thing that just happened Friday that's going to happen next Saturday right here in the city of Tampa in the Vietnamese community that God just opened for him, which I don't want to say anything because I'm not going to preempt anything that the Lord is doing. And I told him, we're going to help you pack your church with Vietnamese people. And, and, and then I started talking about, I said, do you realize? Now, this is where it gets crazy. I said, do you realize, Pastor, that you and me could be talking like this? It was 8 o'clock last night. We were on the phone. And I said, by the way, that 5000 I gave you, that's not for the ministry. That's for you and your wife. He said, well, we're going to put a deposit down on a Sienna. I said, no, you're not. I'm buying, we're going to buy you a Sienna next week. I want to buy you. I want to buy you a seven passage of that. Somebody said, why? Any man that can run 600 miles overnight deserves a vehicle. I'm not stupid. And I'm so happy. I welcomed him to the city. I said, I'm so glad you're here. We're going to see the Asian community shaken by the hand of God. Uh, and I could t he already told me stories that are just as crazy in the natural. They're okay. They're okay. Yeah. I understand. I understand. I feel like that myself sometimes. <laughs> Somebody said, well, do you need to get it to that extent? Well, it depends on how many miles you want to run. <laughs> you want to go one mile or 600 miles? It just depends on you. It depends on you. Because if you won't yield to the Holy Ghost in here, you will never yield to the Holy Ghost out there. Amen. And when you do have any lost wishes, you'll light up the cigarette and smoke it.
Somebody said, what happened? People get flooded. Yeah, that's the fire of God falling right now. So all of these people think they know what the Word of God says. They might know it theoretically, but they don't, they don't even understand what God actually wants to do. And that's not just for our friend from Vietnam. That's for every believer here. Because the Lord had said to me years ago that this joy is the voice of the end time martyr. That if they came and they took us and lined us up against the wall, we'd go, go ahead, make my day. Because as the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Is that powerful? Will you hear more? There's more. I, I just can't take the time to tell you here today, but there's more. He'll be with us from next Sunday night in, in the camp meeting. I'm going to get him up one of the nights to testify, and then we're going to have him back to come preach here. Yeah? And then we're going to do a big stand for Vietnam. By the way, Canada's opening right now. I'm telling you. Bill Prankett called me. He said it's opening. Canada's opening. So then by constantly using your faith, ah, so you mean I don't just be flooded? No, I, I, I'm flooded to use my faith to do some things. The life of Christ will be released deep inside you, not in your noggin. Somebody say, I've got the life of Christ in my head. We need it in your spirit. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Is that good? Evangelist Merlin, is that good? Is that good? Huh? Is this better than any restaurant food right now? Huh? Is this good? Then you will be empowered. Everybody say empowered. To discover what everybody one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of his dimensions. That was one thing he said, that the more they tortured me, the more I got hit with joy. And the more I got hit with joy, I kept saying, I love you. I love you. They shock, shock. I love you. I love you. I love you. I just love you. They said, how does your God help you love us when we torture you? How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. The extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. You see, there's people here at the river that are a river. And that's why everywhere you're going to go, there's going to be a flood. Because the flood is here because you are here. Can you say amen? amen. He says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this, he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You whose battery has waned. You peop Some people came in here with 2% reserve. You who came in here and you, you got a low power mode. We, God's about to amp you up a bit. You're going to be amped up here in the Holy Ghost because the Lord told us raise up 300 multi millionaires that will fund the end time harvest. 
and then individuals that are going to make an impact. Can you say amen? amen? That when you walk into places, things begin to happen. Miracles begin to pop like popcorn. God's favor, God's blessing coming into your hands. Property will come into your hands supernaturally. Vehicles, planes, trains, boats, automobiles, ships, come on, coming into your hands supernaturally. Communications. Somebody said, we don't have the money. You need this. Forget the money. The money will come. You need this. Stop worrying about the money. Get your eyes on him. Get your eyes on him. Put your eyes on him. Put your eyes. Put your eyes on him. Exceedingly abundantly. I got married with no money. I had no money to propose. We bought this property with no money. Everything we do, many times. But we have a word from God. And when you have a word from God, the money will come. The provision will come. It's like, it's like there's automatic doors when you walk up to the door and then phew, the doors open. But you have to get there. You can't sit on your recliner rocker clicking a remote. Let me watch, I'm watching online. Well, I know that that's true, Pastor. I can feel it in my spirit, but it's not really for me. I'm too old for this. All right. As I said, we can ask God to remove you. Take you home. When do you want to leave? Which flight do you want out? We can arrange a flight out this afternoon would you, if you want to go home. Well, how many know that God put you here for a reason? Some say, yeah, but the devil attacked me. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? He attacks everybody. You're not the only person being attacked. But let me tell you, we're going to make the devil pay for what he did to you, what he did to your family. He'll rue the day. Now, the reason I know what he said was true is because I tell that story from Singapore in 1995 when I'd eaten, the pastor fed me some, some raw eel, like sushi, you know, which I'm, I'm, I like to cook food where I come from in Africa. You eat raw stuff, you're dead, you know. And I was so sick. We had 12,000 people in the arena three times a day. For two days, I battled nausea, like vomiting. And there's nobody, I mean, I'm doing the meetings, three services a day. And I walked into the hotel room. My wife says, you fell on the bed in your suit. And I said, oh, God, help. And I woke up at 7.30 in the morning. I was totally fine. And my wife says, you never slept. I said, no, I slept. I had a great night. I feel refreshed. Everything's gone. She said, no, you prayed in tongues the whole night. So he prayed in tongues and ran 600 miles. I prayed in tongues, got healed. I totally, I totally understand that. Totally, totally understand that. Because I all, always said off there, if you want to pray through me any night, you can take over, do whatever you want to. Don't underestimate the power of God and don't allow religious people to talk you out of what God has given to you as his children. So let me wrap this up. Uh, and then we receive the morning times and offerings that this week is going to be a week of the supernatural. As we told you, what, what this man walked, has walked in, that's Book of Acts stuff. And I said to him, I was saying this earlier at 8 o'clock in the evening, I said, do you realize that you and me could be on a phone call like this? And suddenly we find ourselves in, in Phnom Penh or Cambodia and, and we preach and then we back for our church service and, and nobody will even know that we went anywhere. But the people will see us. Somebody said, I don't believe that. That's fine. It's not for you. You fly Spirit Airlines. I fly Spirit Airlines. Somebody said, will that happen? I don't know. I'm just telling you what God's about to do in this final hour will supersede anything you can ever even begin to imagine. And I know there's people out there, Howard Brown thinks that he'll be translated supernatural. No, I just read what the Word says. 
So I did joke with him. I said, Pastor, as long as we dress properly, because it would be terrible if we end up somewhere and we didn't bring the right clothes. You know what I'm saying? So he was laughing. I was laughing. But <laughs> Amen. So let's believe God for great miracles this week. Who's, who needs to see some supernatural things this week? Wave your hand at me. Amen. Try to throw your hand up with a little bit more excitement. Okay. Then let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Let's believe God together. Father, thank you for your precious people. Thank you for increase and multiplication on every side. Let this be a week of supernatural provision. Monday, miracles. Tuesday, miracles. Wednesday, miracles. Thursday, miracles. Friday, Saturday, Lord. Move mountains out of the way. Things that were supposed to break, let them break. Any hindrance of the enemy is moved out of the way. Thank you for your favor and your abundant blessing. And we promise you, as you bless us, we will never forget you. And we honor you and we lift you up. And we will always tell people, it is you. It is you. It is you. It is you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.